is our last speaker coming up. So uh, Dr. Gregory Theoton, I mean, is the I mean, uh, so-called father of disaster medicine. <laughs> and uh, and the, uh, the, the book, everybody will know about that. So uh, Theoton's disaster medicines, I mean, uh, he's the author of it. And also, I mean, uh, he asked me not to introduce him uh, to publicly uh, uh, on, in our flyer, but he's the, also the advisory doctor of the uh, White House uh, about disaster medicine stuff. So uh, I'm so happy to uh, invite uh, my boss to here. So please uh, uh, welcome him. Uh, he will introduce you about the 911 experience and also the uh, why Korea need uh, counterterrorism medicine. Okay, please pause. Thank you, thank you, Hee Jun, um, and thank you all for attending. And also, thank you for inviting me to this um, to this conference. So uh, you've heard a lot about different aspects of counterterrorism medicine um, over the course of the last few hours, and what I think I'll try to do um, on this very historic day is try to um, give a little bit of uh, an idea of how it is that we actually came up to uh, with this idea of creating uh, this initiative called counterterrorism medicine um, what led to that i'll give you a little bit of my experience at 9 11 as well and um and then we'll talk about why i think at least counterterrorism medicine is different and why we need to take this unique approach to this aspect of of healthcare. <clears throat> so if you give me just a moment i'm going to share my screen Okay, uh, Hedron, can everybody see that? Yeah, we can see I'm it. Assuming. Great, okay. All right, so again, this is a very historic day. Um, 22 years ago, almost exactly now, or maybe an hour earlier, I received um, notification as the commander of a federal uh, disaster medical team, a DMAT team. Um, that we were being activated and we were heading to New York City for came to be known as the um, World Trade Center disaster and, and Ground Zero. Um, it was, as you can imagine, um, a surprise um, filled with, I think, multiple different um, feelings and, and thoughts as we were getting ready to leave. Um, and I'll go through a little bit of that, I think, as I, as I do this presentation. But again, it's a it's a very memorable day in, in, in many, many ways. Um, I'm going to talk about why, um, you know, what we learned from 9-11, uh, what we took from that and other experiences to put together counterterrorism medicine, why I feel that's unique and why I think probably South Korea needs it, much like a lot of, a lot of the world um, needs counterterrorism medicine. I'll start by saying I don't have any um, conflicts except the fact that I do have this textbook and much of what I'm talking about uh, will, can be fine in the textbook. So I think one of the biggest issues, not just in counterterrorism medicine, but also in disaster medicine in general, is this idea that there are these looming threats out there. Um, they could have unpredictable complexity. Some could be very complex, some not so much, but they're looming threats and they don't um, often announce themselves. Uh, it usually happens like a light switch. There's some exceptions to that in disaster medicine, like hurricanes, for instance, but for the most part, uh, these events, including intentional events like terrorist events, um, happen suddenly. It's like switching a, a light switch on, which means that we have to have the capacity to respond quickly as well to have the most efficient response. And that means that from the healthcare perspective, we have to be able to go from daily operations to this idea of crisis operations, disaster medicine operations, or counterterrorism medicine operations, again, as quickly as possible. And that begins, I think, uh, and I would argue with the idea that these these threats are out there, we should not ignore them. Um, I'm not suggesting that we prepare for every single thing that could happen. Um, as we say in the US, we have this um, uh, idea of Chicken Little who was running around saying the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and he did it so often that people just didn't listen to him anymore. So it was, nobody was preparing for the sky to fall. Well, I would argue that um, while we shouldn't do that, we shouldn't jump up and down and say we have to prepare for absolutely everything that could have possibly happen. You know, on 9-11, the sky did fall. And um, there are some things that are complex enough, potentially catastrophic enough, uh, as well as uh, high likelihood, or at least, you know, of these low frequency, high acuity events, more likely 
that we should be preparing for them. And I think terrorist events are one of those things. So again, this day, 22 years ago, um, I had received a, a, a call essentially from Washington, D.C. that my DMAT team, my federal team, Massachusetts 2, was act activated to go to Ground Zero on 9-11. It was right about one hour prior to this day, 22 years ago, um, prior to this time 22 years ago that i was activated and, and received that call um that's a whole nother presentation of what we did down there we spent two weeks um we set up five medical stations and we uh, ended up seeing about uh, three thousand uh, uh patients uh, over that period of time uh, almost 400 patients a day um that you can see my id from ground zero on the left there and that's also uh, me with the pink mask uh, standing at ground zero on the right so again a very memorable day